Semyon Varlamov shines as the Islanders blank the Predators and fall into third place in the Metropolitan Division. But who should start on Tuesday against the Rangers? We've got that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. We have got a lot to discuss as the race for the playoffs continues to heat up. Five games left for the Islanders, but first... If there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, send us an email to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name, where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You can also follow the show on X at LockedOnIsles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all things Isles all season long. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis. And it's great to talk Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. Islanders end a long dry spell against the Nashville Predators. Come away with a 2 to nothing win over the Preds. And uh, this just a... a, a Look, this was not a work of art by the New York Islanders. We still saw some of the things that plagued this team throughout the season, uh, including allowing 41 shots on goal. Uh, Initially, it was 39, and then they upped it to 41. So, uh, you know, after the game, they made that adjustment. But Semyon Varlamov, just outstanding in making those 41 saves. And look, we all know when it comes to goaltending in the National Hockey League, it's not just how many saves you make. Sometimes it's when you make those saves. And without a doubt, uh, Varley came up huge on several occasions where the Islanders just made flat out errors in their own zone. Uh, a couple by Robert Bortuzzo, one in particular by Kyle McLean that I recall. And each time, you know, Varley made the save, bailed out the player who coughed up the puck. And that was huge for the New York Islanders who really needed this win. And a couple of things uh, that, that I observed from this game. First of all, Varley was outstanding. Second of all, there were times when this team, again, struggled to clear the puck out of their own zone. It has been something that has plagued this team all season long. And thankfully, the goaltending was able to bail the Islanders out under these circumstances. Great also to see Noah Dobson. He gets what turned out to be the game-winning goal. And I I give him a lot of credit for that. He is starting to, at least offensively, get back to his form. His slump appears to be ended. And that is absolutely huge because, let's face it, the Islanders need the production that Noah Dobson gives them uh, down the stretch. And while there are guys who can also add some offense, Mike Riley especially, comes to mind. Riley, he's a great second offensive defenseman on your roster, but he is not at this stage in his career as dangerous offensively as Noah Dobson. So getting Dauber back to being a productive offensive player is a huge key for the New York Islanders. And then 
back-to-back games for the Isles with an empty net goal. Kyle Palmieri with uh, the empty netter. And, you know, for Palmieri, that's his 26th goal of the year. And and I, I'm going to say flat out because, you know, I will be critical of these players when they struggle. I also want to praise them when they do well. I try to shoot straight as much as I can. And to me, based on his overall production this year, uh, I have to say Kyle Palmieri, earlier in the year I said maybe on a very good team, he's a third-line winger. Fine, maybe that's true on you know Edmonton or Toronto or teams that are particularly deep offensively, but he is a legitimate top six forward right now for these New York Islanders, and he's on pace to finish with, let's say, 27, maybe 28 goals if he can somehow get you know, a couple of two goal games or a hat trick down the stretch. He has an outside chance of finishing with 30. So, uh, you know, Kyle Palmieri, you proved me wrong. And I'm happy to say that you did keep up the good work because the Islanders are going to need palms down the stretch in order to essentially get the W. And I I really did like, uh, you know, that aspect of it. And then the other thing, uh, Noah Dobson, who we mentioned, has struggled in his own zone, especially in the last, let's say, month or two. But, it, you know, he's still not great in his own zone. But boy, in this game against Nashville, seven blocked shots for Noah Dobson, five blocked shots for Robert Bortuzzo. Uh, when you look at the number of blocked shots that the Islanders had, four for Romanov, three for Polak. There's a lot of block shots in this game. And the thing about block shots, there is something about them that just connects with desire. You know, you got to be willing to sacrifice your body and put in the effort. And so often over the course of the season, we have been a little critical of the Islanders for not giving you that 60 minute effort, for not playing well, for not being ready when the puck was actually dropped to start a game. In this game, even though they gave up the 41 shots and blocked so many shots and had their struggles at times, one thing I got to give credit to Patrick Waugh and this team, they were ready to play from the time the puck was dropped. This, even though the final score in this game was two to nothing, the Islanders had pace, they had effort, And it was good to see this team emotionally and physically ready to play this game right from the get-go. And that's what we needed to see. One other note, you know, every day, as you'll remember on Friday, we talked about that top line for the Nashville Predators and how dangerous they are. And obviously, their most dangerous player is Philip Forsberg offensively. He had. 10 shots on goal in this game, and Semyon Varlamov stopped all 10 of them. So uh, congratulations to Varley. And, you know, just getting the job done against such a talented player like Forsberg in a crucial situation, that is huge for the New York Islanders, and it really did matter. As far as the hero and goat of the game, the hero is easy. I have to go with Varley. 41 saves when you're outshot that way. And down the stretch in the third period, how many good scoring opportunities did the Preds have? I mentioned the times that Varley bailed the team out. This was a great effort by Varlamov, and he deserves the hero of the game. Go to the game. I'm going to go with Robert Bortuzzo only because of those, you know, two really bad giveaways that he had that just set things up for uh, Nashville to get some really good quality scoring chances. This is not a meant to really be a hard condemnation of Bortuzzo. He, like I said, five block shots. He did some things well in this game, Uh, but To me, those two giveaways were really creating some high danger chances, and that's why I made him uh, the go to the game. And if you want a dark horse, you know, candidate for hero, 
I mean, I talk about Dobson, and, and he's certainly in the mix. But as an unsung hero, how about Casey Zizekas? Seven hits, two block shots, and he led all Islanders forwards with 18 minutes and 27 seconds of ice time. So uh, to me, Casey Zizekas, he helped kill penalties, and uh, that was huge. And boy, we got to stop seeing the Islanders taking those back-to-back penalties like they did in the third period, early to midway through the third period, Brock Nelson off for high sticking. And then just a few seconds after they kill that one, Simon Holmstrom off for slashing. Can't have that. So, uh, you know, got to clean that up. But the penalty kill did come through when they needed it. And that was absolutely huge for this team. We have got a lot more to get to on today's show. We'll have uh, a question about, you know, who should start in goal next for the Islanders after that very strong performance by Semyon Varlamov. We'll also talk about Kyle McClain and uh, his role as we enter the mailbag. We've got all that, plus for our Islanders' birthday of the day, a Hall of Famer who unfortunately is no longer with us. Let's see if you can guess who that is. He won all four Stanley Cups with the Islanders. All that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Regardless of where we are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Horvat, McDavid, or McKinnon will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Islander fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL. You'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn the volume down with all that shouting? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, and it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So big question now, and it's something we talked about a little bit last week, but I'm sort of wondering where the Islanders stand now after that outstanding performance by Semyon Varlamov on Saturday night. And that question is, do you stick with Varlamov after a 41 save shutout? Clearly Varley has been playing well. As of late, we know Sorokin ended the losing streak playing better, but we still did not see grade A Ilya Sorokin even in the last two games that the Islanders won when he started. Uh, There are a number of, you know, issues. There are no more back-to-backs. So let's start with that. You have a game Tuesday, a game Thursday, a game Saturday, and then Monday and Wednesday of the following week, c'est fini. That's it. All done. Uh, So no more back-to-backs. You have essentially, uh, starting Tuesday, a game every other day until you've played, you know, five games in 10 days, and that's it. I would have to say you are not going to have one goalie start all five of these games. That's not on the table. The question is, who starts and when and how short of a hook do you have when push comes to shove? And, you know, to me, it's almost like the playoffs. Right now, 
the way these two goalies are playing, I mean, Sorokin is still your starter, but it's almost becoming a 1A and a 1B situation with Varlamov. Over the course of the season, Varlamov has a better save percentage. He has a better goals against average. And again, there's nothing statistical that I have to back this up, but it's pretty clear, especially recently, that the Islanders seem to play a little bit more confidently in front of Semyon Varlamov. Now, you're going up against the Rangers in two of the next three games. Tuesday at home, uh, essentially. And then Thursday, uh, excuse me, then Saturday at Madison Square Garden. And that is the dreaded matinee game. So Tuesday, do you stick with Varlamov after that outstanding performance? You also have this factor. You know that Igor Shesterkin is likely to start for the Rangers, and Sorokin and Shesterkin are close friends off the ice and big rivals on the ice. Does that little extra inspiration for Sorokin factor in? To me, I would stick with Semyon Varlamov, and here's why. Five games to go, no margin for error. I go with the hot hand. If Varley falters. You could always turn to Sorokin, even if it's just giving up one or two early goals, but you wouldn't be deflating Varley's confidence. If it's the other way around, if you start Sorokin and he gives up a couple of early goals, I I think, you know, his confidence is a little more fragile right now. And I think that, you know, subbing Varlamov in for Sorokin, if he has a rough start, wouldn't bode very well for Sorokin's confidence. And, you know, to me, it's almost like a playoff situation. You have two really good goalies. You ride the hot hand. And to me right now, Varley is the hot hand. You ride him until he falters, and then you can always go back to Sorokin. So if Varley goes up against the Rangers and gives you another, you know, gives up two goals or less and you know, faces 35 shots and does another solid job, I stay with him until he cools off. Um, Whereas if if Varley falters, you either come back with Sorokin against Montreal on Thursday, or you can put Sorokin into the game early if Varley really doesn't play well or the team really doesn't play well uh, and just basically say, hey, this, this is where we're going with this. And I think that it, it it it's a difficult decision for Patrick Waugh. He has to make the right decision because again, this playoff race that we're seeing is really going down to the wire. And you know, the Islanders are in third place right now in the Metro but their margin is so tiny. Uh, And you just can't afford, quite honestly, to have, you know, the, the, you can't afford to have a mistake where you don't get good goaltending down the stretch. Look, there are five games left. The Islanders have to win at least three of them to make the playoffs. You know, the Flyers have lost seven in a row. Uh, going into Sunday's game. The Capitals are on a losing streak as well. There are, you know, going into Sunday's game, there are, you know, none of the teams in this battle seem to be stepping up and really playing well with the exception as of late of the Islanders and Penguins who are both on four game winning streaks. So it's going to go down to the wire. Let there be no doubt about that. And making the right decision on the goaltending situation is going to be critical for the New York Islanders. And let's see what Patrick Waugh says. And yeah, we put up a poll on our YouTube page. Who do you think should start in goal Tuesday against the New York Rangers? Uh, so you can vote Sorokin, Varlamov, and definitely we'll let you know uh, on Tuesday's show, tomorrow's show, uh, the results of that poll.
We have got more to get to on today's show. We're going to dip into the mailbag, talk a little bit about Kyle McClain, uh, uh, and a little about Casey Sezikis as well. We'll get to that, plus our Islanders birthday of the day, coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time for your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available in the free Fire TV channels app. So let's go to the mailbag. Always great to hear from listeners and viewers. And uh, here is an email from James, who is uh, a friend of the show. Here's what he says. Gil, it's James. I don't know about you, but I've been super impressed with the play of the identity line. Kyle McLean is the perfect fit playing with Martin and Clutter. He's an agitator. You could see how he gets under the other team's skin He's not afraid to go in on the four check and fight for loose pucks along the boards. Martin has been playing his best hockey of the season, and we know clutter is always game. You can just notice it every time they're on the ice. Do you think McLean has finally established himself as a full-time player? I think he's earned it, and I just wanted to give a shout-out to that line because I think their play has contributed greatly to the Islanders' winning streak. Thanks, as always. Let's go, Isles. James. First of all, thank you for the email. It's always great to hear from you. I I will say that I think Kyle McClain has proven himself to be a solid bottom six NHL player. Yeah, I I don't know if I would put him on the third line just yet for more than a game or two, but I like what I've seen overall from McClain. It gives you that odd goal. Uh, he even won four out of five faceoffs against the Predators. He'll hit, he'll work hard, and he hasn't taken too many bad penalties. I, I think he adds a little youthful juice to that fourth line. And I think when you take it to another level, and I'm going to tie this in, the fact that Casey Zizekas was able to move up to the third line and now even moved up to the first line, I think has been a factor as well because Sezikis has played well, even though, you know, would would I, look, I'll put it this way. Would I put Casey Sezikis on my first line over the long haul? No, I I would not. But at the same time, uh, I really like, the idea that Casey Sezikis adds a little physicality to that top line. You know he'll protect Bo and Barzi. He is always hustling. He does have enough speed not to keep up with Barzi, but not to be left flat-footed either. And look, you go and look back at that Nashville game, that top line of Horvat, Sezikis, and Barzal outchanced the opponents 9-3. to Uh, so that was uh, really helpful and it shows you what this team is able to do. And Casey Sezikis, he said, I just let those guys do what they do. They're great offensive players. They're great at bringing the play up the ice and creating changes. And I'm just there 
trying to push defenses back, trying to get up there. And that's my motto. Just work and get them the puck. And Patrick Waugh went as far as to compare it to what Asa Tikkanen did for Wayne Gretzky and Yari Curry. Sometimes having someone that plays with energy fast and well defensively makes that line even better. So again, long term, do I want Casey Zizekas on my top line? No. But right now, it's working. They're riding the hot hand. The good play of Kyle McClain makes it possible to move Sezekis off the identity line and on to another line. And I think it's worked well for the Islanders, both on the fourth line. And, you know, we've seen Sezekis play well on both the third line and now the first line. And look, knowing Patrick Watt, this combination will only last for as long as it continues to do well. I'm fine with that. We know over the offseason, whether the Islanders make the playoffs or miss the playoffs, they need more top six forward talent, preferably a goal scorer or two. Whether they'll be able to do that remains to be seen. But And whether Lou Lamorello will be willing to do that remains to be seen. But bottom line, right now, I don't know if there's a better choice. And when I say right now, I mean for the next game or two, or at least to start the next game or two. I don't think you can do too much better than the job that Casey Sezekis has been doing. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And uh, Sunday, well, Sunday would have been uh, the the birthday of former Islanders forward, 70th birthday of former Islanders forward, Clark Gillies. Gillies, a native of Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, first round pick of the Isles in 1974, uh, fourth overall pick, and uh, played for the Islanders as a rookie and scored 25 goals in that first season. And look, he was a captain of the Islanders, he was part of the trio grand with uh, Brian Trache and Mike Bossy, one of the all-time great lines in hockey, and to me, still the greatest line by far in Islanders history. Uh, in 958 career games, Jethro, as his nickname was uh, known, 319 goals, 697 points, 1,023 penalty minutes. And, you know, Gillies at 6'3", 210, he was big. You didn't want to mess with Clark Gillies. Gillies was a willing fighter, but not an eager fighter. He fought predominantly to protect his teammates. And, you know, you didn't want to mess with him, but he wasn't looking for things. And amazingly enough, Clark Gillies never topped 100 penalty minutes in a season. He did have 99, 96, 91. You know, he he came close. But he never got into triple digits. And this is back in the 70s and 80s when, you know, players routinely had 100, 200 uh, penalty minutes in a season. But Gillies wasn't like that. He added 47 goals and 94 points in 164 playoff games uh, and was a member, as I mentioned, of all four Islanders Stanley Cup winning teams. Finished his career with two seasons in Buffalo. The thing about Clark Gillies, Great guy on the ice, in the Hockey Hall of Fame, off the ice, so involved in the community. You go now, for example, to Huntington Hospital. There's the Clark Gillies Pediatric Wing, uh, his foundation donating money over there. So just, you know, Clark Gillies, not only a great hockey player, but a great member of the community on Long Island until he died. And, you know, we didn't even know he was sick. He kept that very quiet. And uh, he left us too soon back in January of 2022. Uh, Great Clark Gillies joke that he used to say. Somebody once asked him, where was Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan? And he basically said it was six feet from the Mooses behind. One of his better games as an Islander, we go to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1984, May 12th, 1984, Game 2 of the Stanley Cup final at the Nassau Coliseum. And it's the Islanders and the Edmonton Oilers, Grant Fuhr and Billy Smith, two Hall of Famers in goal in this game. And with the Islanders up two to one, Clark Gillies scores late in the first period 
to extend the Islanders' lead to 3-1. to one. Anders Kallor, the assist. On the power play in the second period, Gilly strikes again. Dennis Potman and Mike Bossy on the assist. And in the third period, again on the power play, Trottier and Paul Boudelier assist. A playoff hat trick for Clark Gillies. Islanders even the series uh, with a 6-1 to one win over the Oilers. Series even at 1-1. And believe it or not, to date, this is the last victory the Islanders have had in the Stanley Cup final round. Uh, and you got to go all the way back to 1984. Gillies, three goals, a plus one, four shots on goal, two goals coming on the power play. Clark Gillies is our Islanders' birthday of the day, and to this day, he is missed. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every dayers, tomorrow on the show, we'll have a full preview of the game against the New York Rangers on Tuesday. We'll also have the results of our poll on who should start in goal, so make sure you join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe, and thanks for listening to and watching the Locked On Islanders podcast.